I'm Jen Annett, and I'm a professional triathlete slash mom slash <laughs> part-time worker slash coach. <laughs> a little bit of everything. I went down and watched Ironman Canada in 2006, the first year we lived in Penticton, and I was so inspired. Like, I'd never seen anything like that before. I was inspired by the athletes, I was inspired by the race itself, I was inspired by all the spectators. It was just so amazing. I chose to do Mont Tremblant here in Quebec because it's always been on my bucket list. Everybody's always told me I have to go. Basically, the course is made for me with my strengths. Everybody always asks, like a week out from the race, that like, how are you feeling? I'm like, do you really want to know? I don't. I feel like crap. <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> so I usually arrive three days before a race. Today, Thursday, and race is Sunday, and that usually gives me enough time. We'll see you. See you in the morning. <laughs> Got some fans back there. Yeah. So Friday, that would be tomorrow. Training, I have put a swim in, like a 30 minute swim. And I think I got a 20 minute run uh, that I just got a slot in somewhere. We've got a pro meeting at one, so that's where we'll find out who's actually here and who's not. Just going over all the rules, of course and all the little nitty-gritty questions that everybody has. <laughs> Special needs. Are we first or last? How is it set up? First. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Saturday, I just have bike check-in and gear bags, and that's it. I'll usually do a walkthrough of transitions so that I know exactly where I'm running and from the swim, biking out, all of that stuff. I try to go to bed early. Nobody ever sleeps wrong on the race night at all. Um, I honestly count on my Friday night sleep being the best sleep. So I will try to get to bed early-ish on Friday and sleep in a bit on Saturday. Race morning at Subaru Ironman Mont Tremblant. For the professional women, including Jen Anna, the preparations are complete as the clock ticks down to their 6.38 a.m. start time. They let us in to warm up like 20 minutes before our start and then pull us out when we still have 10 minutes to sit on the shore. So I get cold really easily and then that's the last thing you want to be doing is standing on the start line shivering. And then I kind of, yeah, just get in the zone and try not to overthink everything. Usually try to line up with somebody that's just a tad faster than me. The first discipline is a 3.8 kilometer swim. For amateurs and even some pros, this can be the most daunting part of the entire day. It's all about getting in the water without having a panic attack. I am very prone to panic attacks in the swim. I've had lots of times where I've had to stop for like 30 seconds and regroup my breathing. American Rachel Zelinskis, a former collegiate swimmer with an incredible 5103 clocking as she heads out onto the 180 kilometer bike with the lead. Just 45 seconds back is another former American collegiate swimmer, Haley Chirk. <laughs> Jen Annett is eighth out of the water. Nine minutes back as she heads for her best discipline. I've had eight second place finishes and I think 14 or 15 podiums. So you can do the math there and zero wins. <laughs> so I knew that I had a chance at the win, like a, an actual realistic chance. So the reason I was at Subaru I ran Mont Tremblant was because it's always been on my bucket list. Uh, I've heard nothing but good about that race and when people ask if I race there and I say no, they're like, you're Canadian, like how have you not race there? And the timing has just never worked. I'm from Penticton, that's my hometown, so I would have been racing in Penticton had there been a pro race, I could not race in my hometown. Here I'm passing Renee. Uh, I believe that she was in the pack of swimmers that I was originally with, so I knew that she was out ahead of me. It's a patience game. I just have to remind myself I don't need to catch everybody in the first hour. I've got 
five hours to do this. I have 180 kilometers to chip away at every single person. And it is setting the fastest pace among the professional women. However, Haley Chura, the leader since early into the bike, is still eight minutes ahead of the Canadian. Earlier in the year at Ironman Des Moines, and it placed second. And while it was not the win she hoped for, it did earn her a qualifying spot to the Ironman World Championship. I am the only Canadian pro female going to Kona this year. So that actually makes me feel really special. So I'm super stoked. Me, Cody Beals, and Lionel Sanders, and that's it from, from Canada. Haley Chur is first out onto the final discipline, a full marathon. 42.2 kilometers. Australian Renee Kali was able to repass Annette on the bike as she heads out of T2 in second place. In third, seven minutes back is Jen Annette. I don't know at this point what I'm capable of running on this course. I didn't know what Haley was capable of either. I had a lingering stomach cramp that I get, it's like getting a hamstring cramp in my abs and it happens often uh, in races. I've been able to deal with them at every race, so I wasn't really too worried about it. I knew Renee was right ahead of me. I could see her in the straight stretches and I knew that that, that I was closing on her. The two-minute deficit to the Australian to start the run is all but gone. However, Annette's seven-minute gap to the leader Haley Chura is holding steady. It's only 10k in. We got lots of time to go and we got 32 kilometers left to run and anything could happen. American Haley Chura captures her second Ironman title as she is the women's champion at Subaru Ironman Montreal Blanc. <laughs> Canadian Jenna adds to her impressive list of nine Ironman podium results as she captures her fifth runner-up title. At the end of the day, I'm always happy for how my fellow competitors have done. Haley is a great athlete. Uh, she had an amazing spot on day. American Rachel Zelinkis celebrates third place as she is greeted by her fellow University of Georgia alumni. That podium is like trying to climb Mount Everest at that point. <laughs> it really is. But it's always a good thing to be on the podium in my own country and there's not a whole lot of pro races left in Canada right now. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I executed my race the best I could.